Section 1, The Power of a Strong Start, Why Section Introductions Matter. Have you ever started reading a book and felt completely lost? You try to follow the story, but it's like wandering through a maze without a map. Now imagine that same book with clear, compelling introductions for each section. Suddenly you have a guide, a compass, to navigate the twists and turns of the narrative. That's the power of a strong section introduction. It's not just about starting a new thought. It's about guiding your reader, giving them a roadmap for what's to come. A well-crafted introduction can pique curiosity, establish context and smoothly transition between ideas. But it's not just about clarity. A good introduction can also inject personality and style into your writing. It's a chance to connect with your reader on a deeper level, to share your unique voice and perspective. So why, why are section introductions so important? Because they are the key to engaging your reader, clarifying your message and making your writing truly shine. What do you think is the most challenging aspect of crafting a compelling section introduction? Section 2. Setting the stage. Grabbing your reader's attention from the first sentence. You asked, what's the most challenging aspect of crafting a compelling section introduction? For many writers, it's that first sentence, the hook that grabs the reader's attention and refuses to let go. Think of it like the opening scene of a movie. You need to draw your audience in, set the tone, and create anticipation for what's to come. You wouldn't start a thriller with a leisurely stroll through a meadow, would you? The same principle applies to writing. A strong section introduction needs to capture the essence of what you're about to discuss while enticing the reader to learn more. And it all starts with that crucial first sentence. There are many techniques to achieve this, from posing a thought-provoking question to stating a surprising fact. The key is to choose an approach that aligns with your overall tone and subject matter. How do you ensure your opening sentence seamlessly connects to the rest of the introduction and the section as a whole? Section 3. Weaving a seamless transition, connecting your ideas with finesse. Connecting that killer opening sentence to the rest of your introduction is crucial. It's like building a bridge. You need a sturdy foundation and a clear path. The secret lies in creating a smooth transition. Think of it as a subtle shift in perspective. Guide your reader gently toward the heart of your argument. Use connecting words and phrases. Words like however, therefore, and for example, act as signposts. Weave these transitions seamlessly into your writing. Your reader will effortlessly follow your train of thought. Section 4, The Art of Variety Exploring Different Types of Section Introductions How do we tailor transitions to different types of section introductions? There are countless approaches to crafting a compelling introduction. One technique is to pose a thought-provoking question. This engages the reader's curiosity. For instance, what if we had the power to reverse global warming? Another approach is to start with a surprising statistic. This grabs attention and establishes importance. Imagine opening with every year over 8 million tons of plastic end up in our oceans. Choose an approach that aligns with your tone and subject matter. Section 5. Painting a picture with words, using vivid language and imagery. You're right to want more. Crafting a captivating introduction goes beyond structure and transitions. It's about painting a picture with words, using vivid language and imagery to bring your ideas to life. Imagine reading a section about the Amazon rainforest that starts with The air hung heavy with humidity, a symphony of buzzing insects and chirping birds filling the air. Don't you feel transported to that lush, vibrant world? That's the power of sensory details. By appealing to your reader's senses of sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch, you create an immersive experience that draws them deeper into your writing. Don't be afraid to use metaphors, similes, and other literary devices to create vivid imagery. Instead of stating a fact plainly, find a creative way to express it. For example, instead of writing, the city was crowded, you could say, the city throbbed with a million beating hearts, each person a note in its chaotic symphony. But how do we balance this evocative language with the need for clarity and conciseness? Section 6, The Power of Questions, Engaging Your Reader's Curiosity. Your right to be mindful of balance, while vivid language is powerful, clarity and conciseness are crucial. A cluttered introduction can be just as disengaging as a bland one. One way to strike this balance is by harnessing the power of questions. A well-placed question can pique your reader's curiosity without overwhelming them with information. It invites them to pause, reflect and actively engage with your writing. 
For instance, instead of launching into a detailed explanation of a complex concept, you could begin by asking, what exactly is artificial intelligence and how will it shape our future? This immediately piques the reader's interest and sets the stage for a clear, concise explanation. Remember, questions are powerful tools for engagement. Use them strategically throughout your writing, not just in your introductions, to spark curiosity and encourage deeper thinking. But how many questions are too many? Could an over-reliance on questions make our writing seem disjointed or insecure? Section 7. Show, Don't Tell. Illustrating your points with compelling examples. You're right to be wary of overusing questions. Too many questions can indeed make your writing feel disjointed or lacking in confidence. It's all about finding the right balance, just like with vivid language. One way to avoid this pitfall is to focus on showing, not telling. Instead of simply stating your point, illustrate it with compelling examples. Examples provide concrete evidence for your claims and make your writing more relatable and engaging. Think about it. Would you rather read a dry explanation of gravitational force or a captivating anecdote about Isaac Newton and the falling apple? The latter not only illustrates the concept but also makes it memorable and relatable. Remember, your goal is to engage your reader, not just inform them. Examples, anecdotes and case studies are powerful tools for achieving this goal. However, finding the perfect example can be tricky. How do we choose examples that are both relevant and engaging for our audience? Section 8. Keeping it concise. Finding the right length for your introduction. Choosing the perfect example is indeed a balancing act. You want something relevant, engaging, and appropriate for your audience. It's about understanding your readers and anticipating their interests, knowledge, and potential biases. Now, let's talk about length. Just as a good story needs pacing, a good introduction needs to find the sweet spot between too short and too long. Too short, and you risk leaving your reader feeling unmoored. Too long, and you risk losing their attention before you even get to the heart of your argument. Think of your introduction as an appetizer, not the main course. It should pique your reader's appetite and give them a taste of what's to come, but it shouldn't fill them up. A general rule of thumb is to keep your introductions concise, ideally no more than four to five sentences for shorter pieces and a paragraph or two for longer works. But how do we know if we're being concise or just cutting corners? Section 9, The Importance of Flow, Ensuring Smooth Transitions Between Paragraphs. Knowing if you're being concise or cutting corners comes down to practice and feedback. It's about developing an ear for language and a sense of what your readers need to stay engaged. Think of it like learning to ride a bike. At first you're wobbly, unsure of how much pressure to apply to the pedals or how to navigate turns. But with practice and guidance you develop a feel for it, a sense of balance and flow. Writing is no different. It takes time and effort to develop a rhythm, a natural cadence that carries your reader effortlessly from one sentence to the next, one paragraph to the next. And that's where transitions come into play again. Just as you use transitions to connect sentences within a paragraph, you also use them to create a smooth flow between paragraphs and sections. What are some effective strategies for creating these seamless transitions and ensuring our writing flows effortlessly? Section 10. Practice makes perfect honing your skills through writing and revision. Mastering any skill takes time, patience, and a willingness to learn from our mistakes. Think of it like learning a musical instrument or a new language. Regular practice is key to honing your writing skills. Set aside time each day to write freely without judgment. Revision is also crucial. Rework your writing, experiment with different structures, read your work aloud. Does it flow smoothly? Is it engaging? With each revision, you'll better understand your writing style and audience connection. Section 11, Conclusion. Mastering the art of section introductions. Overcoming the fear of judgment is a challenge many writers face. Remember, writing is an act of courage. It takes bravery to put your thoughts and ideas out there for the world to see. Be kind to yourself. Don't strive for perfection on the first draft. Embrace the messy, iterative nature of writing. Each sentence you write, each paragraph you craft, is a step toward finding your voice and sharing your unique perspective with the world. Mastering the art of section introductions is an ongoing journey, a process of continuous learning and refinement. 
by embracing the techniques we've explored, from crafting compelling hooks to using vivid language and smooth transitions, you'll captivate your readers and elevate your writing to new heights. Now it's your turn. What resonated with you the most? What challenges do you face when crafting section introductions? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's learn and grow together.